All right, welcome back to SoFlo TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most, just keeping you up to date with the whole Beachy Stout thing as it unfolds. All right, stay right here, stay tuned to the channel because we're going to follow it through from credible sources as everything unfolds. Not claiming to know anything, just telling you what is published out there as witness statements are being read in court and people are testifying. This is what's coming out. So, Shout out to Jamaica, the gleaner for this one. First paper drop says McDonald was appearing in court for the first time since Monday when he was charged in what had become a cold case. So he had been remanded until March 22nd when he is to appear for a bail hearing. So Beachy is going to go up for a bail hearing. His lawyer has made that clear. March 22nd, they'll be appearing for a bail hearing. I'm willing to bet. That he is not going to get that bail hearing. Um, not bail hearing, but I'm willing to bet he's not going to get that bail. Bail will not be granted, I don't think. But let's see how that goes. That's just my prediction. Now, so the accused, which is Beachy Stout, he appeared in court via a Zoom before Justice Vinnett Graham Allen. McDonald is also on criminal charges for the August 2020 murder of his second wife, Tanya. In court in this particular day, though, prosecutors said that more than 10 years ago, Beachy Stout paid a detective to orchestrate the murder of Merlene McDonald after their marriage broke down. Some details came out. She had left their matrimonial home in 2007. So this morning on our morning live show, I think I said that he had left. Well, it turns out that she was the one that had packed up and left the matrimonial home. So she leave him. She left him. And it looked like the big man just couldn't take it. Seeing? So she was shot multiple times. Sometime in the night time there on May 2nd of 2009, shortly after leaving her business place. Meanwhile, in relation to his second wife, Tanya McDonald, the businessman is also charged with conspiracy to murder. And we already know how she was found as well. Now, the businessman along with a person called Aska Barnes, they were arrested and charged after they were taken into custody on August 5th. This is just giving you the rundown, you know. After they were taken into custody during um, August 5th, 2020, during a series of coordinated operations by Major Investigation Division, Denvalin Minot, remember this name, Denvalin Minot, who was also arrested and charged in connection with Tanya's killing, he, he immediately pleaded guilty. In the Home Circuit Court, he pled guilty again last September and he was already sentenced. He got 19 years. Now, when that happened, we could do a whole different video on that because his description of how it was done to that girl, it was so graphic and it was so wicked that I can't understand how they actually gave him only 19 years. But that tells me that they really want the big fish in this pond, no pun intended. And the big fish in this pond would be Mr. Beachy Stout himself. In order to get that though, they have to give up something to get something. So here is a person who can sink him and they're going to make a deal with this person. Give him only 19 years after committing such a gruesome crime for his testimony. Some people say, well, he could be lying. Him just a try avoid 35 years in a prison, right? So I'm a make up stuff against Beachy and I'm sure his... Beachy Stout's lawyers are going to argue from that point as well. However, after his guilty verdict, after his guilty verdict, this is Denvalin Minot to know, after Denvalin Minot pled guilty, he also offered a plea deal with prosecutors to divulge details of a witness statement Minot gave police investigators claiming that Everton McDonald offered him three million dollars to kill tanya that was the second wife minot also admitted that he after being offered three million dollars by mr beachy stout that he went and hired another man to do the actual killing so he subcontracted the contract but he also testified that he 
watched the other man do it and he described how the other man actually did it. Boy, I may mean, I tell you the details are gruesome, but we're not going to go into those details here because we've gone into those details before on previous videos. The testimonies that are coming out now pertaining to his first wife. So the Supreme Court on Wednesday heard startling allegations. And again, I'm taking this from the Gleaner. Heard startling allegations that the well-known Portland businessman, Everton MacDonald, otherwise known as Beachy Stout, had expressed regret after the murder of his first wife. And then wished he could bring her back and retrieve or get back him money. And this is what he said to someone. Who is this someone? And what else came out? Beachy Stout said to him, allegedly, that, boy, I regret me kill her and I wish I could have just bring her back and get back my money from so and so. Detective so and so. I wish I could have collect my money from blank and get back my money. I'm sorry for kill her is what he said one of the witnesses recalled being told by the accused six years after the murder of his wife. MacDonald at the time was reportedly complaining about his second wife, Tanya, who he claimed was running up and down all over the place with all kind of boy and gal and disgracing my name and embarrassing me. The witness in this statement so, so hold on there. So here he was complaining about second wife. He must say second wife is a disgrace. She run up and down all over the place and shame me with boy and gal and she wild and all these things. So he started having regrets. Like, you know, first wife was a good woman. John know me shouldn't do nothing to her. Me miss her now, you know. Because look what me end up with. That kind of thing. The witness in this statement, which was read in court however said that he turned to the accused which is Mr. Beachy Stout and him said Mr. Mack I know you kill her a gunman kill her to which Beachy Stout reportedly responded to him by saying no I me pay for kill her because she did I go leave and me can't afford for anybody else get her wow now remember you know this man who is saying this has also been um, implicated himself in an already cut theme deal. It's the same person already cut his deal to get only 19 years. And I'm going to tell you about his 19 years in a minute. He walked away with a sweet deal. Put it that way. So, as he keep on talking, him said to Mr. Max, which is Beachy Stout, say, I know you kill her. A gunman kill her. And him said, no man, I'm me kill her. <laughs> John no star. Me never want nobody else to get her. The court further heard that MacDonald on another occasion in 2017 again told the same witness that he regretted killing his wife. MacDonald's wife, who the court heard had left the matrimonial home in 2007 after the marriage had broken down, we already know the part there when she got killed and all that. As the allegations unfolded, the court heard that McDonald's had suffered bouts of depression after his wife had left him and he had even attempted to take his own life on more than one occasion. So he was really going through it when the first wife left him. You see it? It wasn't a beat up your chest thing and me had a big man round here and girl you can go on about your business. It looked like him did really in love with the first wife. And it wasn't he that left her. It was she that left him. See? So man keep up in foolishness till good woman left him. And then him end up with where him end up with. Anyhow, the witness in the statement. Now according to the witness, he, this is how the witness said. You know, the witness in the statement said in 2017... That had just the other day, he went to Beachy Stout's home to make a delivery and he found Beachy partially unconscious, locked in his car with the windows wind up and the engine running with a water hose attached to the muffler, pumping carbon monoxide into the car. 
them up there you can't really make that up you know I saw some out of movie thing that now according to the witness he shook Beachy Stout until he revived him shake him shake him away I do wake up wake up until he revived him and when he came to he started crying and when he was crying, he was crying at the Simon testimony, you know. When he was crying, him crying, him said, I can't take this no more. Look what my life come to. This is the same witness the court heard on another occasion in 2017. And he was sent by accused to purchase rope and to purchase gramazone. So I see him personally, you know. Beachy sent him to go to the store, allegedly again, go buy rope and gramazone, which is a weed killer. But he disobeyed that order. It's like him knows that the man I got to do something. So he said, no, I don't buy it. And he was scolded for it. Now, I don't know what kind of scolding he got for it. The big man tell if you go buy something, bring it come. And you'd refuse to or you didn't do it. What kind of scolding took place, I don't know. But he said he was scolded for it. This is where things get interesting now. I talked to a, 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 a friend this morning. A, 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 associate this morning a linky this morning another witness mcdonald's nephew who had reportedly noticed beach's depression after the marriage had fell apart said that he took his uncle to see his own obya man after he showed him a ladder so him go up at the yard and beach is showing a ladder a ladder that was perched under a tree Remember the grammar zone and the rope. Show him the ladder perched under the tree. And he said to him, separation is harder to deal with than death. And that he was going to hang himself. That witness is now deceased. So the link you were called me this morning and said, so Flo, how come you not addressed that part there? I hadn't seen it yet until that linky brought it to my attention. But the link here asks the question now, how did that nephew die? Was this a case? Because the link here said they need to look into it. They need to look into how that nephew died. Because remember, you know, anybody we have talked about this man, this man probably knows who it is because he has certain people in his pocket that work on his side or is going to tell him, say, yo, we have so and so down at the station, you know, and them are, this is what them say about you. And him said, oh yeah, and get rid of him, right? So they want to know if that is what happened. How did the nephew die? Was it a bike accident, a car accident, him go swimming and drown, river take him away? Or was it a violent death? Did him get stabbed up, shoot up, or he just disappeared? We want to know. And I say, you know what? I never thought about that. But yes, me I want to know how the nephew, because this kind of testimony... And this can only, this can either work two ways. For one, Beach's lawyer is going to say in court, listen up, all these are trumped up charges and now they are claiming that this dead man said this. When did the dead man say that? And I said to the linky, I said a good lawyer can get that thrown out. However, if they had him on video making that, these statements, allegations before he died, then that could possibly serve some impact in court. But if I just hear say, he said that to detective so-and-so, then don't look for that to fly. That's just my feeling about how that particular piece of evidence is going to be treated as the court process goes on. Anyhow, I'm making my predictions along the way as I am, as this thing unfolds, right? So his nephew is deceased, but... Police is saying that his nephew told police in his statement that he gave against his uncle, told him that he was going to shoot his wife. So the uncle tell him, say, I'm going to shoot his wife. And he told his uncle, which is Beachy Stout, say, that not necessary. As the allegation was read aloud in the court on Wednesday, you would wonder where Beachy Stout was. Well, Mr. McDonald, who had appeared before the justice, Vinet Graham Allen via Zoom from the Horizon Remand Center in Kingston. He folded his arms throughout the proceedings 
as he sat and he listened. He wasn't crying or nothing. He wasn't motioning and I say, I lie to Mattel. He was just chilling. As the allegations were read aloud in court on Wednesday, he had just been sitting there, folding his arms and listening to people say all these things about him. How ladder catch up on tree and you did tell me, say, I go hang yourself and how we come find you in your car with the hose attached to the muffler and pumping carbon monoxide into the car and you did pass out. How you did suicidal, how you say verbally, a me killer, me set her up, forget shut up and these kind of things. And he just sat there. His lawyer, Matthew Hyatt, however, informed the court that he intended to make bail application on March 22nd, which I had mentioned before. So we're looking for March 22nd coming up for Beachy Stout's lawyer to go make a bail application for him. And I think I am going to predict right when I say that he's not going to get that bail application granted. The judge is going to say he has the wherewithal, the connections and the resources to flee to go into hiding, to never be seen again. A late night boat to Cuba or Haiti and from the same go anywhere else in the world because money can talk. And if it is true that he orchestrated or paid a detective to orchestrate what happened to his first wife, then that obviously means that his connections run deep. So he is a flight risk. So I don't think they're going to grant the bail. Just mark my words, SoFlo TV words, then we're going to see when that time comes, if it happened. So you can remember if you say, SoFlo did say that still. Anyhow, Tanya's partially burnt body, we know how they found her already. And the businessman along with whoever else was arrested with him, we know about all that already. Then Valin Minot, who was also arrested and charged in connection with Tanya's killing. He pleaded guilty and you know already him get him 19 years. I have heard rumors that Denvalin himself had a hit put out on him even while he was behind bars. I don't know how true that is, but I cannot imagine him being safe behind bars because somebody is going to be willing. Can I imagine a man who have a whole heap of money say, yeah man, a long time them give me life in here anyway. So here what? A stab off him head. And you just take care of my family outside. Go make sure, say, that like, this is a legit way that Denvalin Minot can actually get his life ended as well. So he made a big bargain with the devil and he got away with an atrocious murder. Only got 19 years for it. And he is eligible for parole after just 10 years. Think about the details of the crime as he himself, Denvalin Minot, described what they did to Tanya. Think about the details of what they did and to be eligible for parole in only 10 years after doing something like that. Boy, I don't know. Anyhow, leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one and don't forget, hit that subscribe button as we follow this case all the way to whether it's going to be conviction, guilty, or it's going to be a bus off and laugh situation. I'm out. Peace.